She's one of the best investigators I have. But? She's different. Uh, in what way? In every way. Something wrong with the report? Anything you chose not to disclose. He's clean, in my opinion. He's honest. Our credibility isn't dead yet. Mine is. Hypothetically, if this murder mystery were to fall in the lap of James Bond, how differently would he approach this case? And how do you think, what's the, what would be the difference between the two characters taking on this mystery? Well, he wouldn't run away when he's shot at, probably. That's kind of the best way, the best, easiest way to describe him. The, the, you know, that's the, the deal with it, this guy. I mean, I, I kind of wanted to be, I wanted it to be as for real as possible. So that, you know, when, it, you know, when you're doing a thriller, when you're doing a murder mystery, there's got to be a, kind of the, the right amount of tension. And it, it, you've got to believe that the characters are going to get, going to get in trouble. So Bond would have dealt with it very differently, but I can't quite tell you how. There's some other script somewhere there. We've got the back in the two with James Bond. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. He's had a long-standing sexual relationship with his co-editor of the magazine. Sometimes he pleasures her. Not often enough, in my opinion. No, you're right not to include that. I need your help. You come stay on the island. A way of avoiding all those people that you might want to avoid right now. You will be investigating thieves, misers, bullies, the most detestable collection of people that you will ever meet. My family. Hey, how are you? Pleasure to meet you. Congratulations. Ah, oh, jeez, that's oh, harder is than that my handshake. Oh, so you, actually, you have a really I good know, handshake. I know, I do, but that was like two really good handshakes uh, meeting in the middle. That's never happened. You know what? <laughs> I will say that. You, know, you never get the two at the same time. Yeah. So this, this is a deeply emotional role, as I said, and there's some pretty insane sequences in this film. And I was wondering if you could just take me back to set that day we have to shoot that particular scene. And when that camera shuts off and you kind of like leave set for the day, what do you do? Like, do? How do you emotionally come down from that sequence? Well, I think that was probably like a 15 or 16 hour day, so I went home and went to sleep. <laughs> right, to sleep? Yeah. When you get up in the morning, I mean, do you like, do, uh, how do you feel? Like, I you... got up in the morning, went right back to work, and did it all over again. Oh you know, that was a really hard week. It was, I think we started that scene on Valentine's Day, and... Um, it's a good day to start that scene. We shot it for two days, and then, uh, and then we, we had the revenge scene, um, the next two or three days, so it was a, it was a really long, hard week. Do, are you ever like worried or nervous about like your family watching like, these scenes? Like, are, are you worried about them seeing it? Like, are, is it awkward? No, I mean you can't think about that when you're shooting, when you're working, and when you're shooting scenes like this. You know, they were all really aware of what I was doing, and they were all super supportive. So um, you just can't really think about that. Otherwise, it would be hard to get through it. This is Harriet. Someone in the family murdered Harriet. And for the past 40 years, that's been trying to drive me insane. Those are from her, and the rest from her killer. You failed to adapt to four foster homes. Were arrested twice for intoxication, twice for assault. How many partners have you had in the last month? And how many of those were men? I should have control of my money. And you will, once you learn to be sociable. Why don't we start with me? You know what to do. I can't find something you've been unable to find in 40 years. You don't know that. You have a very keen investigative mind. You were here that day. A terrible day. Searching and finding. I never found the body. Was it spontaneous? Was it calculated? Did she know something? Someone wish she didn't. I already thought you had the best job in the world. And I was reading something from you recently that said you, you had to actually gain weight for this role. Yeah. What did you get to eat? Because I mean, I'm thinking I would love to just have to gain weight for, for a job. That'd be awesome. I just didn't think about it. That's just, I mean, I'd spent, I'd spent like uh, six months getting in shape and shooting Cowboys and Aliens and, and, and I came down to it and just and watching my carbs and doing all that you know, sort of stuff and I just, I just gave up. <laughs> I gave up, ate what I wanted. Ate what I wanted, ate what I wanted, drank red wine, pizza, pasta. You name it. I mean, Swedes love a sauce, so there was lots of kind of creamy sauces and meatballs to eat, so it was easy. See, I eat that stuff on a regular basis. It's mm -hmm. probably why I'm the skinniest fat guy on the planet. <laughs> the last time I reported on something without being absolutely sure, I lost my life savings. I need a research assistant. I know an excellent one. She did the background check on you. The what? You don't think we could hire just anyone for something like this? It's Mikhail Blomqvist. May I come in? We need to talk. Hey, hey, who do you think you are? Put some clothes on. Get rid of your girlfriend. 
Can I call you Elizabeth? I want you to help me catch a killer of women. When I see you on screen, I don't see Daniel Craig. I see the character that you're playing. I That's think it's nice one of the nice. great things about you as an actor. Mm. Do characteristics of those characters ever stay with you? Do you ever find yourself kind of turning back into these people in your daily life, like by mistake, you wake up on morning? You just, you don't, no, not really. Not in that sense that you're talking about, but you do when you're filming a movie, just you're in it and that's it. Your head's in it. You don't, you can't really, you know, you can't, you don't get out of it. You probably, I mean, I think I'm thinking of taking it home with you. You kind of do, you're living with it because you go home, you work on the script at night and you go back in the following day. Um, alcohol helps. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, you know, liberal quantities of it. <laughs> Liquid courage. Yeah, oh, exactly. It's good stuff. Yeah, you know, just to relax at the end of the week. That's what it's, what it's good for. Yeah. I've got absolutely no idea of how they're connected to the death of a 16-year-old girl. Don't you need to look over these? I got it. It's better to look at what I am about to show you on an empty stomach. What are you doing? Reading your notes. They're encrypted. Please. Rape, torture, fire, animals, religion. Am I missing anything? The names. I may have some. Nobody likes people poking around in their lives. Everybody knows why you're here. Do you miss? Do you miss being her? Do you miss playing? Like, like when you leave set now that the movie's over and you're talking about it and sitting here and doing interviews, do you miss her and have any of her characteristics stayed with you? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly I miss uh, the work. I miss shooting. You know, it was such an amazing experience, and um, it was such a fun fun movie to make um, and I miss being that focused on something certainly yeah now this is what I think this is a phenomenal adaptation I think the book I mean, the, 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 the movie itself is so brilliant I think it definitely deserved to be made into a movie what is a book that should never be adapted um, I don't know catcher in the rye yes I, I think he actually has a clause where he can that can never be made into yeah. a book Hopefully they'll stick with that, yeah. It's an amazing book. It was a pleasure to meet you. An absolute honor. <laughs> nice you, to meet you. you. Oh, there it is again. Yeah. I keep forgetting. I was like, boom. <laughs> you rocket life. Seriously. Thank awesome. you so much. Nice to, to nice to meet you. Someone killed her. Someone on the island that day. If a woman approaches any beast and dies with it, you shall kill the woman and the beast. These people are insane. Soon you will know us all only too well. With my apologies. And I want to ask you, as an actor, looking back over your career, what do you think was the biggest transformation for you as an actor, mentally and physically, for a role? I suppose a, a very young Henry V got me started and uh, pushed me up until I could get star billing on Broadway. Uh, and it was the role of Henry V that got the critics going, and, and they elevated my career instantly. I was 26. And then I suppose going into something like King Lear, <laughs> much later, was was pretty high stuff. Um, yeah. And then on the screen, doing Mike Wallace was was kind of fascinating. And I, I, I'd known him a little bit before, but to, to do him and that 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 worked, and it was hard work, but interesting, and the results were okay. Those three things, I think, were kind of landmarks on the way to. Now, I can't even imagine what the transformation that Rooney had to go through for this movie, all the piercings and everything she had to go through. If you had to go th get a piercing at all, for ever, ever in your life, well, where would you get it? My cock. <laughs> no, no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> where else would you have it? No, I was that? thinking about, I was thinking about oh, ear or like I lip. Got that done. <laughs> jeez. I wasn't expecting that answer at all. I mean, that's the greatest, Go with a dragon tattoo. Greatest moment ever.